Hey guys, so today I want to check out the Google Chrome browser here in both iOS 7 and also how it looks like here in, on my Galaxy S4. So I'm just gonna fire up the Google Chrome browser because you can actually download, download it from uh, the App Store as well. So usually I do these videos, I compare Safari, which is Apple's default browser in iPhones uh, versus Google Chrome or since it's on touch with browser now, but just because I have the Google Play Edition uh, installed on my Galaxy S4, uh, of the software, I, I can't have the touch with browsers. So I'm gonna compare these two browsers here a little bit in terms of the UI and how they work. Uh, so one thing, of course, you'll notice first here is that you still you get more uh, browsing experience, of course, here uh, in Android because it has a bigger screen or it's on my Galaxy S4 here. Uh, the UI is a little bit changed also. You can see that you have a back button here at the top, but you don't see the reload button. So you have to actually tap on this menu key here. Let's see here, if you just tap on here. You have to tap on that little menu key to find the reload button. I'm not really sure why they hide that button because it feels like a button that you use um, even more than the going back key. You don't have actually a forward key. Uh, and then of course you do have the kind of like the standard tab system here, which is amazing in a Google Chrome browser that you can swipe uh, any direction to remove a tab. Now in the new Safari browser, you can only sw swipe one direction. Uh, so this is definitely nice. And uh, you can of course just add one more tab here. And of course the, the point with the whole Google Chrome browser is that you can sync your Google account. So if you use Google Chrome on your computer, then you can sync all the tabs that you do have opened up. So pretty awesome stuff. So let's just close one of them here. And let's take a close little look here also how the UI looks uh, on my Galaxy S4. Now, the first thing of course is because uh, I have a menu key already down here, so I don't see that menu button down up here. We don't get a back key up here though. We have to tap on that menu key to see the back key. It may be a little bit weird here when you see that you have a, a lot of space here, so they could have just crammed in a back button. But then of course, we have so many back buttons on the S4. I mean, we do have a back key over here. Uh, so it, it should uh, definitely not be a, an issue here. You can't go back uh, to the next page by swiping back like so, that you can with the Safari browser as well. Uh, you can also see here, you don't have the mini key up here, it's because I have it down here. Uh, I probably already said that, but you do have the reload button up there, which is definitely very, very useful because that's just a button that you probably will use a ton. And then the tab system here, looks exactly the same here uh, as it is doing here on the uh, in the Apple world. And I mean, it's just a smooth here, uh, opening up new tabs and stuff. And that of course is my thing. So let's just close one of them here and let's check out the performance over here. So I'm just gonna see here so but definitely one thing I noticed is that y you can see that definitely here, okay, let's, let's hold over the same kind of article over here. Let's hold uh, and pinch to zoom. You can see that it definitely zooms in quicker uh, on the Apple phone. Like I have to stretch my fingers here so much and I have to like do it one more time to get in really, really full close in. Now, of course, one of the reasons why this is happening is because of course the display you have a high resolution, the display is bigger and all that, but the, I think they still could improve that. It feels like the touch, uh, it just responds quicker when I want to zoom in. Like I've already stretched my fingers a lot here and it, it doesn't have zoomed in that much. It's, it's, a, it's a little bit annoying. Uh, they should definitely try to fix that. It just makes make it a little bit better there in terms of the touch experience. You can also see here on both browsers that the browser that it has the brightest display here definitely is the iPhone. Um, it just looks a little bit more white here, uh, which definitely is something that uh, the um, is something a problem here with AMOLED screens that they they don't look super white. <laughs> But they're definitely good displays overall. Uh, let's see here what happens when we do a tap. You can even see here that also the rendering is better on the iPhone. I mean, it just renders everything quicker. This one has to like re-render some stuff. Even though it's not a super big thing, but you can definitely see it and it could be a little bit annoying. Not super though. 
Uh, let's try to load an article here. Okay, seems like, okay, there we go. It was quicker uh, on the S4 when we loaded this up. Let's see here. And this also seems to be a little bit quicker here. Interesting. When I use Safari though, usually Safari is quicker here than the Chrome browser because Apple can control the software and the hardware experience with that browser. So it's probably used more optimized. There we had around the same speed when we loaded that up. Try to load up this. Uh, you don't have a reading mode as well inside of the Chrome browser, so that could definitely be a little bit annoying here. There we go, load up quicker here on the iPhone 5. Uh, you don't have this reading mode where you can just tap on a button up here to go into reading mode when you are inside of an article. You don't have text free flow that they usually HTC phones has. A little bit annoying, uh, definitely a little bit annoying because if you just want to read the text, uh, yeah, could be a little bit annoying. Uh, also, if you tap on the menu key here, what's good with the Chrome browser here inside of uh, the iPhone definitely is that you can get this kind of desktop mode, so you can always request the desktop site. No, I can't tap on this. I'm sure, we, I'm not sure why. Uh, why I can't do that. Of course, both have an incognito tab, so you can, if you want to search and you don't want to save in history on what kind of website that you're uh, going into, then that's a good thing as well. You also have finding page here on the iPhone that I don't think you do, do get in Safari browser. So if I want to search a specific text, I can totally do that. So finding page, if you need that mode, as well going the Chrome browser. So let's also see here if we can um, go in and out of this app. Just tap here also on reviews. And around the same there. Let's go in and out of this. Of course we don't see any major difference. So quick little look here at the browser. Of course here, if you tap on multitasking as well, you can see that actually we see a little bit more interesting. I'm not quite sure why it's black here when we are in the browser, let's see here. Yeah, it's still black, a little bit weird in Android 4.3 that it's just black. Uh, when I tried to see on the preview here in the multitasking area where here you can get like a more of like a nice view of what's going on and it just works. Um, not sure why it's black in under 4.3. This looks a little bit random. So just quickly look here, comparing the Google Chrome browser in, in the Galaxy S4 and on the iPhone 5. Have a good day.